Okay, everybody. Let's see, where are we here? Getting my pencils together. Hello, everybody! Welcome to my studio here in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. My name is Michael Markowski, and I'm going to be teaching you how to draw, as I have been doing um, for the past, uh, I guess this is now going on three weeks now, and I'm going to be working with you for the next hour, and then after that hour, uh, there's going to be some time for questions and answers. So if you have anything uh, burning questions or you want some feedback on your artwork, you can s upload those to all the various different social media channels, tag me in there, and also let me know in the comments so that afterwards it'll be uh, easier for me to find uh, your, your images because I've already got uh, three amazing things that people have sent, or four actually, um, and so I want to talk about those. Maybe, um, maybe, uh, why don't we, you know what, I, I said, I told Sam that I was going to talk about uh, one of his artworks uh, last, he's, he sent this last week, so you know what, let's just take a quick look, and I think you guys are going to be super excited about the quality of the artwork that um, the, the, your fellow uh, viewers have been producing here. Oops, let me see. Where's a better one here? I think that. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at Sam's artwork here and uh, just make this a little bigger. Okay, so Sam sent this drawing in last week and I didn't have a chance to get to it so I thought I'd just really quickly talk about it now just so you have an idea of kind of how I do this if you're interested in submitting your own work. So um, this is a really great example of using some shading to create volume in an artwork, right? So to help create the illusion of three dimensions on a two-dimensional surface. Today we're going to be talking about perspective, which takes those ideas to the next level to really create much more dimension in space. Uh, but for our purpose right now, I think this is a, a fantastic example of what we were talking about last week, which which um, is great that we're, we, we can review it right now um, for those of you that uh, had a chance to watch last week's episode. So here we have this cat that is done in a gray scale, right? So it's all gray rather than color. And which is, I think, a, a really good idea if you're doing this kind of like shading to just try doing this in black and white first. Doing it in color, and I'm going to use some colors today, but doing it in color adds another layer of complexity to it. So just something minor to consider. Um, but I think it's a really beautiful drawing and really great application of all of this shading in here. The Even the background is also shaded, which is important to notice because I think a lot of people often neglect their backgrounds and often this is just left totally white. And I think it's a little bit of a missed opportunity. I think last week I talked about Vincent Van Gogh, uh, who would always pay attention to all of this space and in in art we would call this the negative space and and the shape of the cat being the positive shape so the positive shape and then the negative space that surrounds it so often people ignore that i think you did a great job here sam um a few little things in terms of composition i feel like it it's definitely a dynamic composition in that the, your the cat is a little bit off center, so um, I don't know if this is based on a photograph where the cat was kind of positioned like that, and you made a, a deliberate choice to move the cat over to one side. Um, 
I think it's an artistic choice. It's probably not the choice I would have made. Um, there's something, because I guess this looks maybe like the tail. So I feel like, um, I feel I kind of want to see more of the body of the cat here. And, and I don't know if this is the other leg of the cat. So I kind of feel like maybe if we zoomed out a little bit more, we would see, because we do have all of this empty negative space. I think one way, if you wanted to keep the composition like this, and I'm not saying you should erase it or do anything to it, but uh, would be if this cat, for instance, the, the eyes, instead of looking directly at us, were looking into this empty space, I think that would activate this space, which right now, is beautiful. I love this kind of almost uh, the texture on it. I think if if the cat was looking at it, it would just sort of it would make because when we look at images, we often look at the eyes in an image. And if you're taking my photography class, I've talked ad nauseum about this kind of stuff. But uh, if we're looking at the eyes, then we tend to look at the eyes of a person, or in this case, a cat. And then what are they looking at? In this instance, the cat is looking right back at us, right? Um, but I would maybe put the eyes looking into this space to, you know, because then we look at the cat and think, what is the cat looking at? Is it imagining all of the mice and birds that it wants to chase right now? Whereas right now, looking right at us, um, there's an intensity there, right? Because it's looking at the viewer. Um, other little things here. I love, I love how the eyes are really the darkest part here because they really suck our attention. I would have maybe also added a little bit more darkness into some of the, like you get a little bit darker, you know, I think uh, in our grayscale, this would have been, you know, level three or four versus this is being eight, right? Eight being the highlight and then one being the darkest part. I would have had a little bit of the number one into some of these darker areas to give it a little bit more shadow. And then it's a totally personal thing. Um, in terms of signature, this is a whole other thing that you, I mean, there's people who argue about this stuff constantly on, uh, online and amongst artists and art school, we talk about it all the time. I do find this signature of yours um, a little distracting right here in the corner. Like it really draws our attention to it. And I would have maybe considered even putting it up into the corner or somewhere else um, be, or made it much lighter. So it, it doesn't just pull so much of our attention towards it. That's a sub, I mean, I, I sign all my artworks and I've been criticized by people for signing the front of the painting. And some people say you should only sign the back or all this kind of stuff. So that's a whole other larger discussion, but I would tend to kind of think about make, maybe de-emphasizing the signature a little bit, or if you're going to make it really big, make it more clear like like what is your last name you know so that it's more recognizable because this looks more like how you would sign your credit card receipt and that's a whole other um, approach to to drawing okay so uh, i know yannick sent me three drawings and uh, through instagram so if you want to send me your photos or drawings you want to do that now and then at the end of the episode i'll take a look at those so this is great thank you so much sam Okay, so I'm going to move on to today's lesson here. And um, so today what we're going to be talking about is, is, a, is a great big idea. And this idea is, uh, and, and technique and even philosophy is called perspective. And even more specific to drawing is linear perspective. And this, uh, I think I did actually bring up some images uh, from art history. Oh, here I have them here. Um, just because I think it might be worth talking about um, some of the kind of most well-known images that use perspective. So let's, I'm going to bring this back up here. So perspective is a way for artists to uh, create depth in an artwork and space uh, to draw viewers in and so that we get sucked into an artwork. And um, 
once you see perspective, and it takes a little bit of time to kind of fully wrap your head around it, and today's just an introduction, but once you see it, you'll see it everywhere. And what I think is also really amazing about perspective is that perspective was a concept, a mathematical concept, that existed like uh, maybe 200 years before even primitive photography was even created. So we're talking uh, back in the late 1300s is when the first kind of ideas of perspective were developed. And um, let me see. We'll go to... Actually, here, I, there was one other one here, Renaissance. So you've probably heard of the, the Renaissance, the Ita Italian Renaissance, and figures like uh, Giotto and Michelangelo and uh, Botticelli, um, or some of the other, <laughs> there are a whole bunch of people that, that uh, you probably haven't heard of, because they're not as famous as, as, the, as well, Leonardo da Vinci, obviously, is, is the, one of the most famous artists of all time. But you could see, like, let's say, here's the Last Supper, right? So, you know, this depiction of, of Jesus surrounded by his disciples is, maybe uh, I'll make this a little bit bigger. You know, obviously a super famous artwork, um, and and this is not the, he wasn't the first person to illustrate uh, perspective, or or he wasn't the first person to illustrate this particular biblical scene, but he was amongst the first to use perspective to draw it, and or to paint it, and so previous to this we had um, medieval painting. Right, which was very kind of stilted, and and the space was kind of weirdly ill-defined. It, it looked a lot like children's drawings, but just like really, really refined children's drawings, where everything is a little bit awkward. So, what is kind of special about this, and and why it's Leonardo's Last Supper is important, is that this was painted. Let me see if we there's a well, it, it was painted in a room and kind of high up in a room on a wall, and. If you stood all the way back at the far end of the room, it created the illusion that this whole scene was happening on that far wall, like the 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 walls and the ceiling and the room that you were physically standing in appeared to continue into the painting and then off into the distance. So it was this optical illusion. You know, you 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 would look at it and say, "Well, I know that's a flat wall, but it seems to kind of go further, the painting appears to make the wall look like it's a window into another space, right? So Leonardo using perspective created this depth. So it looks like there's a whole room in behind uh, all of these figures sitting at this table. Okay, so I'm not gonna go into too, too deep into the history of, of perspective. There's lots of videos and, and stuff about that that already exist. Uh, but this is a, a particularly important painting. It wasn't the first one, um, but it, it, you know, the, the, there was some people using perspective 50 years before this. But it definitely is amongst the most famous early examples. Okay, so um, I'm going to go back to my handout here. So just to kind of continue that there are lots of different kinds of perspective. Now, the first type of perspective we're going to talk about, and I'm just going to talk about this briefly. In my, in my classes, I talk about it a little bit longer, and we're going to do, we would do an exercise with it, but um, it's going to be a little challenging for us to do over the web, so I'm going to kind of uh, just breeze through it. So this is isometric projection, and you've probably seen this many times uh, if you've ever assembled IKEA furniture, IKEA furniture is drawn in isometric projection. So let's say if I look at this drawing, this image on the bottom right here, I'm just going to, so I'm zoomed in on this here. If I was to show you this drawing and say, this is the plan for the bathroom I'm going to, uh, this is, the, I'm going to renovate my bathroom and this is what it's going to look like. I think you might look at it and say, uh, um, okay, I, what, 
okay, oh, this is the sink. Okay, um, and what is this here? What are these things? Is this, oh, is that a shower? Okay, so what is this a, so it's not clear, right? It's a, because it's drawn from one angle, and so we can't really see any dimension in this drawing. Whereas, if we use isometric projection, we now see that same image, maybe I'll just zoom back out a little bit more here, this same image reproduced here, but from like a three-quarter view. So we're kind of taking this front view and then rotating it so that we can now see the top, right? If you imagine this being a box, like, uh, let me see, like this box, right? So we've started from this point of view straight on, and then we're kind of now looking at it from this angle. So you could see the top and the front side and this side, right? And you can even kind of imagine what the back side is a little bit, right? So this allows us to see multiple points of view all at once. And if you've, um, there's probably not that many people watching this who have any experience with drafting, but uh, this is, I, I took drafting when I was in high school and we spent a lot of, and before computers and you're drawing all this on paper and using rulers and it was super analytical and like a very left brain activity, right? So very, like a lot of mathematics and you're always you're using the calculator and to try to get all this right. But so you like an exercise in, in a drafting class and exam would be something like this, where they would give you the front view of this object, the side view, and then the top view, and they would say, illustrate it in an isometric projection from a three-quarter angle, right? So you, this image here would not be visible. You'd have to create that from only these three. So it's a little bit tricky, but all of a sudden, this image is a lot clearer to most people than just looking at these three other views, right? So in, when I'm teaching this class in, in person, what I do is I pass out a little sheet like this and I get people to kind of fill it out, right? So here's one and then you're just trying to copy it below, right? So we kind of, I made these relatively simple and straightforward just so people can kind of get a feeling of what this looks like, right? So you would connect these here into this drawing below and uh, you know, if you want to take a screenshot and print it out or, or anything like that, go right ahead. Um, eventually, I'm going to, uh, I haven't had a chance to to make a Dropbox folder, but all of this will eventually be available for people for free on, on the web. Um, if you're really into isometric projection, you can buy um, notebooks that have uh, this they kind of look like this grid you see this this grid they have that grid printed and sometimes it's done as just little dots rather than than full lines and then you could try reproducing this on a piece of paper so some people love this i when i teach this in class i would say nine out of ten people are like oh my goodness this is like uh not for me i want something much more expressive and organic but there's all, usually one or two people in the class who, oh, this is so cool. I love doing this. And this is, I remember when I was applying to art school, I think you had to, to sub submit like one or two images drawn in isometric projection. Okay. So we're not going to spend any time there um, working on that. We are going to move on to one point perspective, however. And... So let's get our sketchbooks out and we're going to do a quick little warm up drawing. And um, let me get another viewpoint here for you. Hmm. What's the best way? Let's, uh, I'm going to create something different here. Sorry for the short delay. Oops, I'm going to put that up there. And then this here. Okay, so we're going to do a little warm-up. And I'm just going to use this image as... Uh, 
as our warm up. So, one second here. Okay. So grab yourself a pencil. And it doesn't have to be too sharp. <laughs> and then I'm going to take my sketchbook and I'm just going to rotate it onto the side here. And maybe I don't want to intimidate you with all of these straight lines. We're going to be doing some straight lines uh, today, but they don't have to be all perfectly straight lines. So just to start, let's put a little dot right in the middle of the page, right? And then let's, we're going to draw a line going out to one of the corners here, right? Okay, so drawing a line out to the corner. Okay. Let's do another line. I'm going to go to this corner. Now, if you are already like, oh, this is an awkward thing, then just turn your sketchbook to whatever, wherever angle makes it feel most comfortable for you. Right? So if I got to draw here, and it doesn't have to go right to the corner, and it doesn't have to be as straight as I just drew it. Right? So again, you can kind of play with your sketchbook and turning it. What is What feels most comfortable? Right, like if starting, it's easier probably to start from the center, right? And we're gonna go to the another corner or, or near that corner. It'd probably be easier to start from the corner than go from the outside in. Okay, so we've got some lines like that. Just to kind of continue here. Let's, we're going to draw what's called a horizon line right through here. And you know what? I'm even just going to, since we're going to make this a warm-up drawing slash lesson here. <laughs> so I'm going to draw a line going all the way through here. So in fact, I'm going to start right from the center and go outward. All right. And I'm going to go this way out that way. So it's not perfect, right? I'm just warming up. And so what we would call this is our horizon line. And also while we're right here, I'm just going to make a little, this is our, what's called a vanishing point. And if you saw the thumbnail to this video, you probably saw something that said, you know, one vanishing point perspective, right? So we, today we're going to talk about one point perspective, right? So there's one vanishing point. And this means that all of the, um, well, not all, but about half of the lines are going to recede and converge towards this point in the center to a single vanishing point. Now, next class, we're gonna talk, I'm gonna introduce kind of briefly, uh, two and three point perspective as well as four and five point. And you can have actually basically unlimited perspective points when you're drawing. But for our purpose, we're just gonna talk about one point perspective because it can get super complicated very quickly. So I'm gonna try to, in, I'm, I'm endeavoring to, to describe this incredibly complicated thing as, as in its most simple terms as possible. So we've got a horizon line and a vanishing point. So um, let's just, uh, let's draw, and I'm just gonna use a few different colors here just for fun. Let's draw a few more diagonal lines. Let's just make a whole bunch coming out from the center here. So I'm just making what we could call guidelines. And, and there's no rhyme or reason to where I'm putting these lines either. I'm just randomly putting them into all sorts of different places. I'm starting from the center, going outwards like this. And maybe that you look at it and go, yeah, it's kind of a cool drawing, right? <laughs> uh, maybe I'll put a few more in here. Why not? So we've got our, our landscape. And I'm just going to go back over here 
and highlight my horizon line. Okay. So, um, let me see. Let's bring, oops, let's bring this back here. So I reappear on your screen. So there's a kind of a, a very simple illustration that we've done um, based on the image that is on the screen there, right? Now on the screen, I've also, you can see there's some uh, boxes in here. So how about let's actually, let's just finish this off with, um, let's draw a, a few rectangles on here. So I'm gonna just find any kind of place and make a little dot on one of those lines. And then I'm gonna draw a line that is parallel to the side of the page not diagonal but you can imagine there's like a ruler and i'm drawing it straight down right so i'm gonna go straight down boom and then i hit this other line and it could be and, and again i don't see what you're drawing so I, I don't know what it looks like um but i'm sure i'm absolutely positive that it is fine right so don't worry you're like oh, mine is a little longer or shorter it's okay Right, okay, so now I'm gonna draw another line. I'm just gonna go right across. And I'm, I'm stopping on the ones that I drew at the beginning, but that's, that's not important that that's where it is. Okay, and then I'm gonna, so that one again was parallel to the top of the page. So let's now, we're gonna go down. All right. So that one is parallel to the outside of the page. And then I'm going to, ideally, this would go parallel to um, the bottom of the page. So technically, it should go right there. But in terms of this drawing, I'm just going to connect it there, right? So because I, there is a way to do this where it's, it's very like a geometric perspective, you could use a ruler and you'd literally be measuring things and you would get a really nice, perfect um, square or rectangle just like the image on the top right of your screen. Let's just, again, just a quick warm up. Let's just do this again. All right, we're gonna now drop another line right down. And then we're gonna go across And then I'm going to come back down. And then I'm going to go right across here. And again, look, I missed my point. I should have done my little golf swing like I talk about doing, uh, right? So it, we're just warming up here. Now, this this is a different kind of warm up than we've done before. Like, I think, uh, was it a couple of weeks ago, I talked about how to do a warm up and they were a little bit more free flowing. So whatever way that you need to to use to draw a, kind of a warm up, you want to do that before before you begin, right? Okay, so this is a very simple kind of grid, and this is great to have that in your sketchbook to refer to. In fact, why don't um, let's just take a moment, and I'm just going to write at the top here, like one point perspective All right so that when people are looking through your journal or you're looking through your journal you're kind of like oh yeah this is from at this these next few pages are one point perspective studies so okay let's I'm, I'm just gonna go back up here and looking at this image you see on the screen here. So this is, you've, you've seen, everyone's seen images, not just photographs or drawings, but in real life, if you've ever walked down a hallway, if you've ever walked down the middle of some train tracks, not, you should be very careful. <laughs> If you're gonna do that um, but some abandoned train tracks um, or down the middle of a road again you want to be very careful that it's it's 
you know, a, uh, <laughs> a, a, a road that is not used or very infrequently used and you're paying attention that there are cars coming by just so nobody gets hurt, obviously. Um, but if you've ever walked in, in a space like this, this is a, you're probably looking at like, okay, I, I don't really, okay, this looks normal, right? What I want you to see when you're looking at this image is a single vanishing point. So I'm just going to use my cursor here. Look how the ceiling in this hallway, we can see this diagonal line going towards a vanishing point way down here at the end of the hallway. Again, this on the other side of this diagonal line going down towards the bottom. Similarly, on the ground, on the sidewalk, right, we have this line going all the way down towards the vanishing point in the center. Again, vanishing point, or move, all this diagonal line receding towards here. And also, you can notice this railing. Look how the railing is is going towards here, and then the other um, bars in this railing all are moving in a diagonal lines that appear to get closer and closer and closer together until they just blur into a blob in the center. Right, even the this windows here. Look at the windows. It's right, the these lines in the sidewalk. All these diagonal lines. And um, now, of course, if you are standing here or you're walking down this hallway, you know from experience that the ceiling, you know, above your head, you know, let's say you're taking this picture, you, you know that you can't, you probably can't reach the ceiling. It's it's too high above you, right? And but you know that if you were to start walking down this hallway, you're not likely going to get to a point where all of a sudden you're having to crouch down because the ceiling is coming down right and you and you do not expect the walls and the railing to start getting closer and closer right because these this vanishing point is far away right so at, so it's an optical illusion. It appears, you know, if somebody was way down the end of this hallway and was walking towards you, you know that they're not this tiny little uh, person that could ride around on the back of a fly. You know that they're a regular-sized human being and they're walking towards you. And, and, it, and as they walk towards you, you know that they're not, by some mystical ability, growing larger like some kind of a monster you know that they're just a, that this is just a regular person walking down down a hallway now it, that all sounds really obvious you know this all is like yeah of course right but when it comes to drawing this is a revolutionary concept to, to draw this drawing like this um, if, so if we go back to you know the Mike, or Leonardo uh, Last Supper image, prior to to people being able to draw this, people just had were incapable of of drawing a drawing that would look like this photograph. It just did not make any logical sense to them whatsoever. And so if you look at those early paintings from let's say. 1300s, 1200s, they would never, just drawing something like this was just not conceivable. Now, of course, we just take it for granted when we see images or paintings drawn in this way. So I, I just pointing this out because this is, it's not just um, a way of drawing, it's also a way of looking and a way of thinking about space and our relationship to space. So Okay, um, so we're going to move forward, oops, so here's just another hallway, I'm just going to th show a few images here, why can't I, okay, uh, so here's again another hallway, again look at all of the diagonal lines 
all these diagonal lines on the floor, even on the walls. Notice we know that this you know wall is not any bigger than this wall here, and that the photographer is is not necessarily taller or shorter than these police officers standing here or and these police officers are not any bigger or smaller than these people walking at the very end of the hallway right it's perspective that is creating this um differences in size okay so again i was talking about a train tracks so we also know that these train tracks are the same width apart here than they are way down there, right? And if, if they did actually in real life converge, a train running down these train tracks would fall off and start an explosion and all this kind of stuff, right? So we know that doesn't happen, right? But just as a, I just want to mention, you know, if, if we were to ask some children to, let's say, draw this train track scene, right? They might do something like this. Right, they, the train tracks are like this, and then we have one post up top here, right? And we have this other power line up top. And if we had a train, let's say we have a train right here. All right, so this would be how, you know, not and not just children most people if i not to embarrass anybody but if i had said let's draw this picture on the screen right now i'm sure probably a few of you would have done it like this and and again not to not that you're there's something wrong with you but if i had tra traveled back in time you know uh how 600 years ago and shown this to anybody on earth and gone like what do you think of my well i guess there weren't trains back then <laughs> that would have caused also a whole other level of confusion but um th there were, this drawing would seem perfectly reasonably normal let's so it's not a train let's say it's just a, a road right they'd be like okay yeah that's that's that makes perfect sense right um so let's we're gonna now i'm gonna show you how to draw <laughs> Uh, this image that we have on the screen right now and well I'm, I'm gonna simplify it so let's uh, I'm gonna bring up a different view here okay so we've got this time if you have some colored pencils let's get your colored pencils out because we're gonna have a bunch of lines darting all over the place so um, we want to have a few different colors that we can use to kind of create a little bit of uh, differences. So I've got a few here. Now, you don't need them. You can do all of this with a regular, you know, graphite pencil. Uh, but I'm going to draw it in color. And you can, if you're, and I'll, let's say I'm going to use red and blue for guidelines which could be just uh which you would use if you're using your regular pencil you're just going to draw very 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 lightly okay so because they're your guidelines and you don't want them to kind of interfere with the rest of your image and then I'll, I'll probably use a regular pencil to go over top of it so we're going to draw that uh this train tracks going into the distance here so let's start with a horizon line now often people put the horizon line right in the middle of the picture right in the photography class we talked a lot about composition and how instead of just sort of sitting on the fence and putting the line right in the middle the horizon we kind of move it up or down to kind of maybe one third or the bottom third so for our purpose let's put the horizon line down kind of on the lower third of the picture right so you could imagine there being kind of three if we were to divide that three columns here okay so we've got our horizon line and i'm just going to move those off so i don't confuse myself 
And then I'm, now I'm gonna put a vanishing point. Now in the drawing we did before, the warm-up drawing, I had the vanishing point right in the center, as well as the horizon line. Just so you can see that it does not always have to be in the center, I'm just gonna move it a little bit off center. So I'm gonna put a little dot here. And again, if you're drawing this, draw lightly, so that if you wanna erase anything, you, you can. Um, okay, so let's start here from the vanishing point, and I'm just going to come out. All right, and then I'm going to do this again. All right, and these lines can go as wide or as narrow as you want. All right, there's, there's, um, they, they do affect some kind of change in the drawing, but for our purpose, I'm not going to um, describe that. Now. Actually, instead of doing uh, train tracks, which um, let's we're going to turn this into a road. So let's imagine this w was just an empty, you know, plains here. This is in the middle of Saskatchewan, um, uh, a province of Canada, which may or may not be familiar to some people, depending on where you are in the world watching. Saskatchewan, where my grand, my uh, grandfather and my father. And, and my father's side of the family all grew up in Saskatchewan, right? So we have, if we just had this horizon line, big, empty, uh, well, not entirely empty, but just open spaces, very flat uh, prairie landscape, right? And then so we decide we're going to, um, we are going to sell some land here and we're going to build a highway going right through the middle. So this is a highway in the middle of this drawing. So again, with my guideline, I'm going to draw... A line going so it looks like it's pretty much going straight up and down and I'm gonna make another line coming out here and now I'm going to I'm gonna go over top of it I wonder well, I'm gonna use this 4b pencil and I'm gonna create let's say a dotted line in the middle of this road so I'm gonna start out with something like that, right? And then I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna draw a couple of lines like this. So this is one dot, here's another dotted line, and these the dots are gonna get smaller and closer together as they go into the landscape. Right, so as I'm going, Things are getting smaller and smaller to the point where now I can just kind of make these little little dots. Okay. So, um, and then you know what? Since these are guidelines, I, I'm looking at this. This side of the road's got a little bit more space than this side, so I'm going to actually widen my road. So the construction crew comes through and says, Hey, one side of the road is too narrow. Let's widen it up. So let's, this is my guideline. So I'm just going to go over top of it a little bit darker. And I'm going to do the same thing again. So we got two sides to the road here. And again, I'm using this 4B pencil. And it's really nice to draw with it because it's so soft and it's very easy. Look how easy it is for me to go nice and dark. Okay. So I've got the dotted line. So kind of, if I'm looking at this drawing, you know, I could imagine myself standing here with one foot on either side of the dotted line, looking down into the horizon, right? Towards my vanishing point. So how about, let's build, we're gonna put a building here on the side of the road here. So, um, we're gonna make a little house here. So I'm gonna start with a guideline and I'm gonna make this guideline and it can go in any direction here. So don't worry about yours being different than mine. I'm gonna start and I'm just gonna go up here, kind of towards the corner. It, it, there was no relationship between this line and these ones down here. So don't worry about like getting, if you want to use a ruler for this, I, I often see people break out the ruler and that, um, it is. It can be helpful, but I also sometimes if people are using the ruler all the time for this type of activity, they get 
really obsessed with straight lines and starting to measure and then everything kind of slows right down so I, I want to kind of encourage I want you to understand the concepts more than I want you to make a perfectly you know straight kind of image okay so um, next we're going to decide let's say kind of about halfway between here I'm gonna make a little dot for myself and I'm gonna draw a line that goes straight down here. It's not gonna go diagonally. It's going straight down parallel to the side of the page here. All right, so I'm gonna draw this line. And again, these are guidelines, so I can draw them more lightly than other lines. So here's one line. And let's just kind of go down, maybe like say like a third of the way towards my vanishing point. And then I'm gonna draw another line. Okay, so, um, and then, you know what, just for our sake, I'm going to go over top of this. I'm going to grab my pencil, and then I'm going to go here. So, this is one wall of a house. Unfortunately, for, for the person that's going to live here, their house is literally on the, the uh, you know abuts the side of this road here so i'm going to now draw another guideline to make the i'm gonna i'm gonna draw a few well let's start with a door so this one is now gonna go out here like that and then well i'm gonna start with guidelines so, I'm, so we're gonna now draw a line it goes top down and then i go over here and draw another one Okay, so then if I draw, go over top of these lines, I'm going to make a little door. All right, and I can even put a little door handle on here. Okay, so um, how about let's even, let's, we're going to continue this. We're going to put a window over top of the door. So I'm going to draw another guideline. That's going to be a really narrow window. You know what, I'm going to... That was too narrow for my purpose. So now let's put this window over top. Okay. And I'm just gonna put, you know, so that people, it's very clear that this is a window. So if you're looking at this drawing right now, we have a road with one side, one face of a building. This, you know, and it kind of right now looks like this could be, you know, a movie set, you know, where they build just the front of a building and then all of this is just empty, right? But we want this to be a real building that somebody could actually live in. So we want to build the side of this house. So let's now take a line and this now this line is going to go parallel to the top and bottom of the page so just a guideline going all the way across here like that and then i'm going to come down here and do the same thing so these lines are parallel to my horizon line and then and now we can decide how wide does this house want to be so we're not going to make it go all the way off the page i'm just going to now draw another line going all the way down here like that okay so then let's I'm gonna go over top of my lines I just drew okay so now we've got this other side of the house so for our sake let's we're gonna re, we're gonna put another window and another door on this side now, and I want them to be in the same height as as these windows and doors before. So where this one began, I'm going to go across. This one began, I'm going to go across. This one began, I'm going to go across. So now I'm going to put... You can see why it, it can be a little bit confusing. Why? It, so it's nice to have some uh, different colors to use. And, oh, that was maybe a little narrow. Okay, so I'm just going to go over top of these lines. Oops. Oh. 
again, I think I said last week, if you make a little mistake, instead of trying to erase, just make the line a little bit wider, <laughs> right? You can kind of get away with a lot that way. Okay. So look at that. And again, we can put a little door on here. So do you see how this looks like it's flat, pointing toward, or not flat, but it's it looks like it's on this plane versus this one looks like it's pointing, it's facing the street, right? So if I wanted to get into this door, I'm walking on the grass or whatever this is here, and I can open this door safely. Whereas if I want to get in here, this is the, the danger door, right? If this is, if you want to kick relatives out that you're not happy with, you say, go out the side door, and they go out the side door and promptly get hit by a car or something, right? <laughs> okay, so we've got one building there. And let's continue with... Um, uh, and let's, We're going to build another... Unfortunately for this person who bought this property right up against the side or the street in this empty prairie... The next person to build a building is going to build a building right up next to their property. So we're going to build, we're going to build a building towering over them right next door. And so you can see I just drew this line up a little bit higher. Right, let's just go all the way up to the top. This is our, our guideline, right? And I'm going to need another guideline coming from the center. So I'm going to go all the way up here like that. And so this is this other building right there. And then I'm going to put, let's, I'm going to make it huge. We're going to make this really big. So here's another guideline. All right. And then I'm going to make this bigger. All right. So you can already see, like, this is a big building. Even though, let's see, I'll, I think I have a ruler around here somewhere. Just, just so you can see, right? So this is, you know, one and a half inches long. This here, right? This one is also one and a half inches long. But what you should ideally see is that even though technically they're the same length, and they don't have to be that length in your drawing. So if you're like, oh, I got my ruler and this one, whatever, right? Don't worry about it. But just for our purposes, they're the same length, but this building should look like it's maybe twice as big as the other one. In fact, let's put a, a doorway on it, right? So that we can see. Let's I'm gonna put a doorway right down here. All right, so we've got this door follows the same opening here. All right, so you can see how big this building like I could put four doors on here right so it's it's at least double triple the the length the width of this one and then let's we're gonna build this building is um we're gonna, I'm just gonna draw a guideline <laughs> it should be straight but it's not and I'm gonna do the same thing I'm just gonna draw right through here and then I'm going to draw this down here, which is parallel to that edge. So I'm going to come across. I'm going to come down and then connect. All right, so you can you can see how big this building is. It dwarfs this building right here. Um, now, I'm just going to really, I'm going to kind of a little bit race ahead here, because we are kind of running short on time, so I just want to, let's say I put some windows on here, right, so I just did a quick guideline, I'll put some windows up on the top here, and say I'm going to put this, oops, this, these are going right across here, let's say there's one here, when I was a kid, I loved drawing things in perspective because it was a really quick way of creating imaginary spaces. All right, I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger, this one. 
right? And this is an easy, like, comic book artists use perspective all the time. Um... And so on, right? So, or maybe we'll just make another window here. Okay. So, and then now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some posts on the other side of this street here. So I'm going to start in the center. I'm going to line that goes outward. And then I'm going to put, I'm going to draw some, like, uh, telephone poles or power poles. So I'm going to draw a few of these lines like this. And even I can have a few going really small. Um, so, and I'm also, let's, I mean, they're, they're poles, so they need to, they're like giant cylinders. And as I go down here, they get thinner and thinner until they just become little sticks, right? So, um, for our, for our purpose, I'm just going to draw these squared off. I, I could draw them even more realistic, but... Okay, see, look, mine's that's kind of a little wobbly looking. Don't worry about perfection. Just get it on the page. Alright, so we got these telephone cables, and you know what, one thing I love doing is, I love drawing these kind of like uh, sagging lines of the cable kind of coming through here. Right, and it even kind of continues off of the page. So, um... Uh, here's And then the final thing, just to kind of finish this drawing off, is we want to put the horizon line back in here. So I'm going to darken it. I'm avoiding kind of drawing over top of these images. If you were drawing really lightly, you could just erase, um, or you wouldn't even have to erase. You could just kind of... Right, so if I wanted, I could try to erase that red line, but I don't think that's important. If you've got a whole bunch of guidelines, uh, you can draw those your new lines more darkly over top of it. And then to help see it, you just kind of squinting your eyes. And you should see the kind of basic shape of uh, this building a little bit more clearly. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think how much more I want to fit in here. It has been an... Uh, just a little bit over an hour. Um, what could, do I want to show you next? I just don't want to burn people out uh, too quickly. Okay, I, I will do one more exercise. I'm going to show you how to draw... Oops, one more image. Oops. Okay, so I'm going to just transition. Oops, that's not the one I want. Oh, yeah, that is the one I want to show you. Okay, so I'm going to go to another page in our sketchbook. Obviously, in, in the drawing we just did, if you want to color this in, you want to darken, you know, you want to add some color to the street you know a quick way of coloring too is is like we're shading holding the pencil on its side like that and i can just really kind of quickly and also notice as i'm shading this see how i'm trying to kind of uh, uh emphasize these converging lines Right, so this is a I can I can color this area in more quickly than I could. Uh, where's another green? If 
then if I was trying to just use the tip of my pencil to color in this whole area, that could take me a little bit of time. Whereas if I do this really quickly, right? Um, and you know what? I was just ignoring the thing I just told you to do, which is to emphasize this space. So technically I should try to be kind of shading like that. Okay. Um, so you kind of get the point. That one's a little too dull to do this quickly. Uh, in terms of the sky, I might want to just kind of go kind of holding the pencil flat. Coloring your drawing like this is helpful, especially because it, it will help... Um, when we have all these guidelines all over the place, it can get a little confusing. So it can be really satisfying just to quickly color it in because then it's going to kind of clarify the, the main kind of shapes. Once you, you really kind of, if you practice drawing a lot, you'll be able to do uh, perspective drawing without actually needing to have all these really big uh, guidelines going all, all over the place. I'm just going to spend a couple more seconds here coloring, um, just because I think it, it's helpful for people to see. So we got that one side. Let's get another color here. Um, okay, I'm not going to color anymore. I think it, it makes, you can kind of see, but I just want to do that because now I think it's, you might see the shapes of these buildings a little bit more clearly. Okay, so I'm going to go to another page here. We're going to do a, one more drawing um, for the day. And um, it's like, once I get going, <laughs> it's hard to, it's hard to, to stop. So I, I just showed this image on the screen previously, and I'll just, we're going, this is kind of the step-by-step -step process to do that. If you want to do it exactly like that, you could pause it and you could follow those steps. I'm gonna do it with you right now. Um, so I'm just gonna bring that down, but I'm maybe let's say this time, I'm gonna move the horizon a little bit higher and I'm gonna go across. I'm going to put a vanishing point here. And now um, I'm going to draw some random squares on this page of some different sizes and in different places. You could draw them where I'm drawing them. You could draw them in other places to challenge yourself. Okay, I think that's good for right now. So there's four on there. That's a good good for us to start there. Now what I want to do is I'm going to connect each corner to this vanishing point. So all of these corners, I've got, uh, what's that, uh, 16 corners. I'm going to connect lines connecting all of them, right? So this, again, is a nice way to practice your uh, lines. You're doing my... That golf swing. I've got to kind of come up with a uh, um, some sort of handy tagline for uh, well, you see, th these aren't I, I was a little bit sloppy here, so there's not a perfect line here. If I wanted, I could use if you want to do this more perfectly you could use a ruler and you could do this kind of thing and you'd be very satisfied with yourself to do this. I'll just do one with a ruler. I, I personally generally can't stand drawing on my own with a ruler. I find it just, it just, I'd much rather, I, I need that freedom. <laughs> I find like drawing with a ruler is just too, uh, just, it takes me out of the drawing and I just get so obsessed with 
making things perfect. But I understand why, you know, you know, especially when you're drawing longer distances, right? Somebody might find it much easier to draw there with a ruler um, than uh, without one. But um, so I understand if you if you want to. <clears throat> okay, so I've got all of these lines, and already you should feel like that your drawing should look like these squares are rocketing out of this vanishing point. Right? There's like the big bang and squares are shooting towards us, right? So, um, but let's say they're, they're not just squares, but we want these to be cubes or rectangles. So not just flat faces of, of a, you know, like a piece of plywood that is, is flying towards us, but a, a box, like a shoe box, you know, or a cube that is coming towards us. So to, to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to, wherever it, it can be totally random. I'm going to draw a line connecting. So it's parallel to this right here. So it's connecting these two. And um, I'm gonna use, now I'm gonna go over top of it with my pencil. So I've got this box that I'm gonna draw over top, and I'm gonna connect these lines like this. So now this is the front of the box, and this is the side of the box. Now. To, to get the, the bottom, I want to draw a line that's parallel to the top and bottom of the page. All right, so it's parallel to the top and bottom of the page. So it connects with this other line. So you see that? And I'll, maybe I'm just going to color it in really quickly. So this is the bottom of that cube. This is the right side of that cube. And let's see, this is the front face of the cube. All right, see that? So the bottom, front, and a side. So let's try this again. Let's do another one. And so let's, if this is the front of my cube, I'm just going to darken it. Um, okay, so I can just, I can determine how long or narrow this box is. Let's make this one, it's going to be a little bit more longer box. This is going to be a big rectangle. So I'm going to draw that line. You notice I kind of just, you know, I, I did, my guideline was a little bit uh, wobbly, so I just kind of corrected it by just going over top of it. All right, so then I drop it down so that it meets this other one. And here. So I'm just gonna color this in so that it's a little bit more obvious. So this is the front of this box. And then this is the side of this box. Right, so I can't because of the way that the, where this box was, it was, you know, um, straddling the horizon line. I cannot see the top, nor can I see the bottom. So it's the same sort of thing, you know. If you're looking at an image, right? You're let's say a shoe box, and you're holding it in front of you. In this view, I cannot see the top or the bottom. Right, if I if it moves a little bit off to the side, you know, I'll just do that for you. Right now, you can see this side, and you can see the front, but you can't see the top or the bottom. Right, so that's kind of like the drawing we just did here. Oops, I'm bring that back up. Okay. So let's continue here. Now I think what I'm going to do 
I'm gonna do a, like a glass box. So this is gonna kind of take things because I think this you can ch you can do this once you kind of play around with this. You can do this in all sorts of different ways and different combinations. So I'm just gonna introduce a few more ways to complicate this a little bit, as if this maybe isn't complicated enough. Um, but so let's um, uh, where is my pencil here? So let's do this is the front of this box. And then just like we've done before, I can determine how big this box is. So I've got one line and then I'm gonna go across and I'm gonna stop where it hits this line here. And I'm gonna come down And there. So right now I have, just like these, I could color this in exactly like we did here, but I want to actually be able to see, if this was made of glass, I'd be able to see all six sides of this box. So to do that, what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna draw this just a little bit lighter, more lightly. Draw a line that connects down here, a line that connects down here like that so so now and, and the reason why I drew a little bit light more lightly is if I did this really dark lines it could get a little confusing people might be like okay is this the back or the front and is this the back or the front All right so I'm just drawing a little bit and then let's say I'm just gonna well I'll leave this this is like a glass box and this do I want to show you what an empty? Well, no, because I don't want to. I don't want this to get too confusing. So let's just do that again on this side. And this one's going to be a, a very narrow box. All right. So we've got. So if you have any images you'd like me to look at, make sure they're up on Instagram or Twitter. I'm gonna start looking at some drawings here, in just a few minutes. And um, uh, if you are, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you want to leave a small donation, I'd much appreciate. I'd be very appreciative. Uh, I mean, there's been some amazing. I've really been deeply honored about the the level of support that you guys have been uh giving us you know i just got an email from paypal for a really generous donation from peter um pretty much everybody who's commenting on here has, has given some money at some point so i really appreciate that so uh, whether it's a dollar or a hundred dollars it's it all is very meaningful to me so i really appreciate that and yannick has been contributing every week so thank you so much um okay so obviously i could just continue here i could draw let's say do i want i don't know how much i want to like uh over complicate this for people right now but i could just spend another 10 minutes just filling this whole drawing up with more and more boxes so you know i could draw another one here or maybe this one could be, it doesn't have to be a square at all on the top. It could be a rectangle, right? I could, let's say, draw one under here, right? So let's, I could make one that's kind of smaller that would take, you know, uh, so that just so we can, s I'll just draw this really quickly. Once, I, I love drawing perspectives. Some people do not like it at all. And I can, I can totally understand why, because it takes... It, it's it's a little bit tricky to understand at first. The reason why I think it's really, really important to know how to, to draw perspective is often people make images of houses um, or any kind of architecture, landscape. Next week, we're gonna draw a room. I'm gonna get you to draw a room in your house, just like Van Gogh did of his bedroom, right? And, uh, 
having some knowledge of perspective makes that exercise so much easier. All right. So, um, so again, you, I, I, I have this. <laughs> once I start drawing stuff like this, I just want to keep on going. But uh, I know some people are just like, "Oh my goodness, this class is gonna go on forever." <laughs> So you can see the difference between boxes that are semi-transparent versus boxes that are solid, right? Um, if you wanted, you could... Another way to do this... Do I want to draw one more? I'll just draw one more quick one here. So I'll just, because I just want to show you a slight, oops, no, see, I just moved my vanishing point away here. I got a little confused, all these lines here. So I understand if you're, if you get confused, it's, it's not, there's nothing wrong with you at all. This can be a little bit, uh, get a little nutty with a bunch of lines going across here. That's why some artists do this as a sketch draw all of this as a sketch, then use some tracing paper and go back over top of it. I'll just kind of show you if I wanted to, another way to do this would be using kind of like dotted lines. All right, so that's to identify kind of the inside of this box, right, as opposed to drawing lightly or, or whatever. Okay, so I think um, that Okay, so I'm just looking at a few comments here. Uh, Shannon says she'd love to have the handout, so I'll try to get that up on uh, the Dropbox link up here. Um, I would be so impressive if I were in the 1300s. Yeah, if you could, if, if you took the, just this knowledge and you went back 600 years ago, um, into the past and you did a drawing just like we just did for people, they would think you were some sort of witch. You know, they would burn you at the stake because they would look at that and go, they probably understand it because once you see it, it's it makes sense. But it would look so, like, no one, it just people hadn't seen this. I, 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 for me, I find that super exciting. And I, I'm going to show you some images next week um, that were drawn, like, 600 years ago that we've only been able to create, recreate in reality with the tech, with, um, like, if you've ever seen those um, three, or not, th 360 cameras that, uh, and, and, you know, and you can wear, if people upload them onto YouTube, and then you can watch them wearing, like, a, um, some sort of 3D goggles or whatever, a virtual reality headset. So, and that works really cool, but if you've ever seen those videos with, and you're not using the headset, the, the video looks really strange, and you see somebody walking in from the left, and then they kind of go out this way, but they're actually technically going behind the camera, right? There were people that imagined that actual situation and did drawings of it 700 years ago, and yet that technology has only existed for five years maybe so that blows my mind that 700 years ago people imagined using perspective taking this simple idea and complicating it for sure like this is one point perspective that is but uh i think that's five four five six point perspective so it gets, we can go into the weeds here definitely but i just think that's that is so cool that you know it makes us think what are the other things that we are only Im able to imagine right now, but who knows, 500 years from now, people will be able to demonstrate it um, through whatever different kinds of technology. Anyway, I'm going to go on and on and on. <laughs> so, if you have been able to do what we did today, that is a huge evolutionary leap forward in your drawing ability. You, you may not feel that way, and... and 
if so, then that makes me feel good because I've been able to kind of teach this actually quite complicated concept in relatively straightforward terms. But this is stuff that a lot of people really, really, really struggle with. And so if you're struggling with it still, that's totally, that. You then you're, you're a part of the 99%, right? Some people find this a little bit more intuitive than others. Um, uh, there was a guy, he's still alive, um, he had a show on television when I was a kid called The Secret City with Commander Mark, where he drew um, a lot of different things in perspective. You know, it was like a children's drawing show that I w would watch obsessively. And I'm, um, maybe I'll, when I do the show notes later on, I'll, I'll put a link to, to he's still around. Um, super incredible stuff that, and anyway... <laughs> so I'm just going to look at some of the drawings that were sent if anybody else sent anything else here let me know ASAP and oh nice to see you Stephen I see you're saying goodbye so we'll see you on uh, Thursday so let me see I'm going to bring up oh. uh, no 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 Let's get this. I think this is the first one you sent. And before I go big screen. Okay. So I'll give some feedback for these are drawings that Yannick sent in. So I think you said this was a soapstone sculpture that you you drew. I don't know if it, if it was supposed to be on its side, because to me that kind of looks like it's on its side. Um so well, let's just we can just turn it. Let's uh, rotate left. Make it a little smaller. Um, that seems to make a little bit more sense to me. Um, and just, but I could see how it could be in the other direction if I just uh, go back. Um, I think this is actually a great drawing. You know what I like about this drawing? is how dark you went, how a lot of people, I would say the most people when they're taking these classes, they, they're they very resistant to, to getting to that number one on that value scale that we talked about a few weeks ago, right? They, they, they don't allow themselves to go all the way to the dark side. And you can see when you, when you go nice and dark like this, it gives it a lot of depth like this you know, um, image, I don't know, look, maybe this is some a fish or, or some kind of creature or a basket or whatever it is, it, it um, pops forward because the contrast of light and dark. This darkness down here really makes this object push forward. So, because we just, this is just a triangle over top of an, like, a, um, some sort of rectangle form right like but just by using some shading it all of a sudden appears to kind of come forward and we see this as a shadow so that's great i i, I don't really have a, too much to add or comment on this um except maybe i see what you've done here with these kind of curving lines on the top of this form what i would like to see is just maybe more of that right i think that this helps because this tells me that this is around or you know like this this curves around here like this right but a lot of the other surfaces don't have that so they start to look a little bit more flat right so using those curving lines if we can add those to your drawing i always just think again like of sculpture imagine it's a sculpture and you're just reaching around and you're kind of pulling clay off and around the form, right? Or you're, it's like some a stuffed animal and you're reaching around and kind of hugging that shape, right? You want your, your pencil, like your fingers, to kind of crawl around to that backside of the form. I think it's great. Um, what else could I say about it? Um, I don't know. I think I'm just going to move on because I, I, I like this drawing. I think it's really nice. Um... I think this is the next one you sent these kind of like i beams interconnecting so this kind of stuff you could apply some of the perspective things that we we've done today 
Um, we could, you could draw this same sort of thing on the drawing we just finished, and I think you'd find it would have a little bit more dimension. Because um, this right now is, is like an isometric projection, right? In an isometric projection, these posts are parallel, like the, the top and bottom, everything is, it never gets more and more narrow, even if it runs, you know, 20 miles down the road or kilometers, right? It's always, they're always going to stay the same width, right? When we're starting to use perspective, those lines would recede towards this end, and this end, they just get wider and wider and do what's called foreshortening in drawing. Um, let me see. I, I think this is great, too. We have these kind of this mass of forms that are um, heaped on top of one another, and they're really well drawn. What I would say, though, is I think what we're missing is some shadows. So I, I like here we've got the darker areas inside, you know, because if there's light kind of hitting the top, this is, you've done the, each, so each beam in isolation is is well done. It's the combination of them laying on top of one another where uh, I think we could add more dimension with a couple of shadows. So if we put a little shadow, kind of a little L-shaped shadow on here, it doesn't have to be too dark, but that would tell us, oh, where'd that go? that this form is laying on top of this one. So a little shadow there, kind of going down, up, right? So that would help this beam look like it's laying on top of this one. And then, so you're just looking for, so let's say this one on top of here, a little shadow kind of coming down onto the beams and behind. So just those, I think last week I was talking about uh, shadows and how important they are and a book I love about shadows. So shadows are really important to help create volume in a in an image. Other little things that I'm noticing. So I, I love how you've got these when you're when you're doing this shading in here. We've got these lines going straight up, and then these ones going here in perpendicular to them. But I see as this object moves into the distance these lines, instead of going straight up and down, start going diagonally, right? So visually what that starts to look like is, let's say you have this L shape here, as it's moving away, it looks like that L shape is kind of widening. So, right, so it kind of looks like something, oh, where am I here? <laughs> so it looks kind of like we're like this, and then as it recedes, it looks kind of like it's, does that make sense? I don't know if that probably not. To, how could I explain? Right. So you, you know, you, at one at the close point, they're like this, and then as they move away, they kind of. So that's how important you know using uh, lines to to direct the eye are. Same sort of thing here, right? So we can see this is very effective here. We see this form, but because you've shaded it all as kind of one um, straight vertical lines. All of a sudden, this becomes kind of flat, right? Whereas if we had continued to shade it, right, in this direction here, and this one up here, it would still look like that L form, right? And then we've kind of lost it a little bit by the end. So I think there's a lot of great things going on in here. This is certainly better than I think most people would ever hope to be able to draw. It's just there's little things in there that I think could be... You, you could even shade on top of this drawing and it, and it would get better. So you don't have to erase anything. I think you could just darken a few things and it would take another leap forward. And then this one, you said you used a black piece of paper and then used a white crayon to draw on top of. And that is really cool. That's a great uh, technique, actually is to use, get a black piece of paper and getting a white pencil or crayon or more like a, there's liquid Sharpies that you can get in silver and gold and white and all that kind of stuff. They, it just is a totally different way of drawing. And for, and it's can be really exciting because having that white piece of paper and trying to fill it up with black pencil marks is can be really difficult. So if you start with a black image and then you're lightening it up, sometimes that's, it's a relief for people because they're just like, oh, I don't have to do so much drawing to 
to to have the impression of a full drawing, if that makes any sense. Um, I can't remember what this is an image of. I don't know if this is an abstraction. I kind of, t if I turn it on its side, to me this looks like this could be a pathway. Right, let's say this is a building here, and there may be another pathway. Or um, oh, it's meant to be. So let's see if maybe. <laughs> you're probably I see your comment here it's meant to be rotated I'm not sure which direction um, so I think I think it's supposed to be like that um, but I think you know I think this is really kind of cool this reminds me of um, the uh, what should I call the expressionist filmmakers like I should remember the name, but uh, like the cabinet of Dr. Caligari from like the late mid twenty nineteen twenties. Great film. I'm, I was obsessed with that film. Silent film, um, but it's uh, it has all of it's you know it's about this guy who sleepwalks in the and uh, is, murders people and there's like a anyway. Um, but th that kind of style, this German filmmaking style of the 20s was kind of parallel to what was happening in art at the time. And a lot of these kind of really sh sharp uh, angles and, and deliberately um, awkward spaces so that it kind of had this little bit like it it because it's a kind of it's a ho early horror movie so it was intended to kind of make you feel a little bit anxious while you're watching it because all of the sight lines didn't match up properly so that's what i think about when i'm looking ah, i keep on touching this um that's what i think about when i look at this drawing is that we have these different spaces that are um uh, what would be the word spaces that that are slightly like the physically impossible. So as you say, it's it's an alleys, right? So so it has this kind of like this one is kind of going up. This one kind of feels like it's going down, and this this is almost like like a you know like a car could drive down a ramp into the underground parking lot or something, and this one's kind of going up and. Um, so I, I really, and I like all of these diagonal lines kind of pushing us into spaces. So I, to, to really increase that is to have more of them and to have them more consistent. Covered alley in Atriani. Oh, MC Escher. Okay, I remember you wrote that, MC Escher. Okay. Yeah, so that, exactly. MC Escher is the master of perspective, right? And maybe, you know what, while we're in here, it is worth just mentioning uh, I'm sure people have seen these images before, and if not, then you are you're up for something super exciting. He um, spent his life doing these like uh, impossible spaces, you know, where just as a um, you know people you know can walk up this side of the stair, and then somebody's walk you know so this guy's walking downward this guy's walking straight up you know like all these impossibilities right these two people on the same set of stairs this one's holding the railing here walking up this way and this person's walking down right so all this impossible stuff happening in one drawing um so and then you know this kind of cool so mc escher's great at a lot of things we're talking about like look at this beautiful rendering of the drawing so we start with just a simple outline and then the hand appears to sort of emerge from the drawing and then it's drawing the other hand that is drawing the hand that was drawing that hand right so it's this perfect loop that goes in and uh, like which hand is the is the hand and which one is the the illustration of the hand um oh i just had a camera just went offline okay so um, maybe I will just pull this thing off of here, oops, and, <laughs> uh, goodness, um, so, I think MC Escher is a great, um, kind of, um, person to, 
study and model if you're thinking about using uh, perspective and shading to create uh, new images. Sorry, I'm trying to... Oh, it's probably some awful sounds right now, isn't it? Where you're hearing grinding of <laughs> forms. And that's upside down. Oh, oh my goodness. Um, my apologies. That has got to be the really nasty sound I've just heard. <laughs> oh, technical problems. Technical problems. Um, okay. Uh, Ten seconds away from being back to normal. Hmm. Okay. Well, ah, uh, that is just does not want to behave. So, um, I think I'm going to just end the show upside down. Uh, I really appreciate everybody for uh, this. What we did today was definitely one of the more difficult things that you can learn when it comes to drawing. But I do think it's one of the most important things there is to learn when it comes to drawing. Um, on Thursday, we are going to be taking this to the next level, and we're going to show you how to draw a room in perspective. And that's really exciting, because then you can start illustrating spaces in your house to make an artwork like Van Gogh did, but also if you want to, like, imagine how you would reorganize the furniture in your living room. Um... So you could easily do a really quick illustration and then draw the couches in different places without having to move anything. And you could do this without even actually being in that room. You could do this from imagination once you understand the basic principles of uh, perspective. Okay, so... Uh, oh, um, Heidi, you did send me another drawing, but you know what? I'm going to get to that on Thursday since... You know, we're pushing almost two hours here. I'm sure there's a lot of people who are, uh, like myself, getting a little bit hungry. And I've got this weird upside down setup, so it's not ideal. So uh, so I think we'll, we're going to call it a, a session um, today. Again, if you uh, do me a favor, like, subscribe. Um, that would be, I'd be very much appreciated. If you want to leave a donation, there's uh, links in the description for how to find uh, a way to PayPal uh, submission. Um, and, uh, yeah, and any other um, drawings that you do over the course of the next week, please send them to me and I'll get uh, give you some feedback like I've been giving, I did with Sam and uh, Yannick earlier today. Thank you, everybody. Stay home. Stay safe. Even though they're loosening things up, you still want everybody to... It's, you, you want to be careful out there, people. Okay. Uh, and we will see you on Thursday.